In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called find first and last position of elements in uh, sorted arrays. So given an array of integer nums sorted in ascending order, find the first and last position of a given target value. So if target is not found in the array, return negative one and negative one. So um, here you can see we have an array um, and the target is eight. So in this case, eight first appear at index three and last appear at index four. So in this case, we just return that in an array, right? So it was their index, so index three and four, right? And if we have target of six, then we do not found the answer, right? We do not found six, and then we're just gonna return negative one. And if the array is empty, then we can just uh, return not found, right? So in this case, there could be a situation where the array is empty, right? So if we were to give in this question in the interview, a good question to ask the interviewer is, um, what if, so like, what if there's only one element that has no duplicates, right? For example, let's say 10, where the target is 10, right? It's not eight, let's say 10, tar 10 is the target. We found the, in we found the element, the index in this case, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So in this case, sh should we return just five, right? Or should we return five, five, right? The starting, the ending position, right? So in this case, like how many elements should we return, right? A good question will be to ask, like if there's only one element, should we just return its own element or should we return something like this? Um, basically the index, right? So that's one question. The other question to clarify, I think is very, very good is um, what if, like how many duplicate values can we have in this array? Cause it seems like the given examples, we only have two, maximum of two duplicate values. Cause if there's only, if the maximum duplicate values that we can have is two, right? Then what we can do is we first found the element. We can just check the adjacent element and to see if those two adjacent elements equal to the target. If it is, then we can just return the adjacent element that is equal to target with the current element that we found um, and their uh, with their index, right? So in this case, it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four. So three and four, right? So we just return its index once we've found the element in the array, right? So that would be a good question. And and for this question, we're just gonna treat this as there could be more than two duplicate values, okay? So there could be three duplicate values like this one, or four duplicate values, right? So there could be more than one, uh, more than two duplicate values. So if that's the case, then what we can do is there's, two ways to solve this problem. One way we can solve this problem is we can use a linear binary um, linear search, right? We can, so we first, we want to find the first position of the element in the sorted array, right? The first appearance of that element appear in the array. So in this case, let's say we were to find eight, we can start from the front, right? We can start from the very left, traversing all the way to eight, up to eight, right? So in this case, we check to see if five is eight, which is not, we're gonna continue until we find eight, then we're gonna return its index. Then we have another function that basically starts at the last element in the array and then go all the way to find the first appearance. Um, so start from the right all the way to the left to find the first appearance of that element of the target, right? So in this case, the first appearance of target eight, in this case, from, from right to left, is gonna be four. So we're gonna return those two indexes, three and four, but this will give us a linear time complexity. So what we can do instead is we can use a binary search because binary search, the requirements that we want to perform binary search in a sorted array, right? And this array is sorted. So what we can do is we can first do, um, do a binary search to find the first position of that element in the sorted array then we find the last position of that element in the sorted array. And let me show you how. So before we talk about the solution and how to solve this problem, I have a video called Algorithm Number 3 Binary Search, which I explain how to implement binary search and what are the three ways to perform by, um, per, to implement binary search. And if you're doing a lot of Leco binary search videos uh, or Leco binary search questions, I highly recommend to check out this video right here. Now, 
Um, to solve this problem, what we're going to do is we're basically going to implement binary search to find the very leftmost element that is equal to the target and the very rightmost element that is equal to target. So basically here you can see we have an example which is target is 8. And we want to find the very leftmost by simply doing a binary search to find that element, right? In this case, what we're going to do is first going to, if we were to have, we're going to have a separate method that find first uh, that one method find the very leftmost and the other method just find the very rightmost of the element so here you can see we start at the left corner and the right corner and if we were to, to find the leftmost element what we're going to do is we first go into the um, perform binary search and get our midpoint which is seven we're going to see if the current element right the current midpoint is less than the target right if it's um if it's less than or equal to target, um, sorry, I mean, like if it's less than the target, right? So if, if seven in this case is less than target, now what we're going to do is we, we're going to move, um, we're going to move our left pointer point to the midpoint and the right pointer point to the, uh, um, the right pointer point to the last element, right? So now we're going to have our new midpoint, which is eight. We're going to see if our current midpoint is less than um the target in this case the target is eight in this case is not right so what we can do is we're going to move our right pointer one uh is equal now uh, the right pointer is going to equal to the the mid right so now the mid pointer is here then what we're going to do is we're going to see if um if the left pointer is actually equal to the target in this case is not then we're going to see if the right pointer is equal to target in this case it is then we're just going to return is the right pointer's index in this case is a three, right? Now, if we were to find the left pointer, the, the leftmost, the right, sorry, the rightmost element that is equal to target, then what we're gonna do is the same thing. We're gonna have our left and the right. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if our midpoint, which is seven, is less than or equal to eight. If it is, then we're gonna bring our left pointer. Then we're gonna make our left pointer is equal to the midpointer. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have our midpointer. We're going to see if the current midpointer, which is 8. And we're going to see if 8 is less than or equal to 8. In this case, it is. Then we're going to continue to move our left pointer is equal to the current pointer. Uh, or sorry, the, the, the midpointer. And we're going to have a new midpoint, which is here. We're going to see if the current midpoint is actually less than or equal to 8. In this case, it is. Then we're going to get our left pointer equal to the midpointer. Now we're going to see, um, now basically our job is done, right? So we basically see if the, the right pointer is equal to at the target, in this case it's not. We basically just return the element that, that, um, that returns, we basically return an element, right? Elements index that is equal to target. In this case, it's going to be index four, right? So to solve this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to have a separate method that find the very leftmost and the right, very rightmost. Initially, we're going to create an array that return at the end. So result is equal to new array with def by default negative one and negative one, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to see if the array is null or uh, the array the length is equal to zero. If it is, then we can just return rest, right? We can just return rest because we cannot find anything, just like this example right here. Then we're going to have our left which um, what we should do is we should have our left is, is like this, right? So result at zero is our left most element, right? Is equal to find left. We're gonna pass in, we're gonna make a global variable. So we have our array and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have array is equal to nums. Basically, we're going to get a, we're going to pass in the target, pass the target to the um, to the function, and for the right most element is equal to find right, and we're going to pass in the target. At the end, we're just returning the result. Okay. So let's create those methods. We first going to have our um, our find left which returns the integer element. It takes a target. 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to perform binary search, right? So we're basically going to have our left pointer, which is equal to zero, and our right pointer, which is equal to array.length minus one. Okay, so while left is plus one is less than right. The reason why we're doing this is because we want to do post-processing, right? So in this case, we want to access the left element and the right element after we've done the, um, the binary search. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to see if, um, if the left pointer, in this case, if we were to find the, the very leftmost, what we have to do is we have to see if array at the mid, right? In this case, our mid is equal to left plus right minus left, and we're going to divide by two. We're going to see if our current midpoint, right, our current mid value is less than uh, less than the target, right? So if it's less than a the target, then what we're going to do is we're basically just going to uh, move our left pointer is equal to the mid pointer, okay? Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to move our right pointer is equal to mid pointer. Then what we're going to do is we're going to see if um, if the the left pointer, right, the left pointer is uh, is equal to target. If the left pointer is equal to target, we're going to return tar uh, the left pointer index. Otherwise, we're going to return the right pointer if the right pointer is equal to the target. If none of them is equal to target, we can just return negative one. And the reason why we check to see if the nums at left first rather than nums at right, because we want to find the most most left element, right? And the most to find the first element, the very first element, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to say if nums at left is equal to target, we can just return left. And if nums at right is equal to target, we can just return right. Otherwise, we're just to return negative one. We're doing the left pointer first is because we want to find the most left element, right? And we're going to do the same thing for the right pointer. Okay. Takes the target and returns the integer value. Same thing, what we're going to do is we're going to have less than or equal to, right? In this case, like I just demonstrated, we're going to find the very rightmost element. And once we find the right, very rightmost element, what we're going to do is we're going to see if the nums at right is equal to target, right? We want to find, we want to check to see if the right pointer is equal to target first, right? We want to find the, mo the very rightmost element that's equal to the target. So then followed by the left. If none of them exist, we're going to return negative one. Okay, so pretty simple. Let's try to run the code. Cannot find the symbol at 21. Uh, we should have an array instead of nums. Okay, let's try to with a few more examples. And lastly, let's try with, uh, with this specific example. Okay, and then the target is three. Okay, let's try to submit. And here you can see we have our success. So basically, this is how we solve the problem using a binary search, which bring the time complexity down to a log in time complexity. And the space complexity in this case is gonna be constant. Um, so there you have it, and thank you for watching.